The idea of a creature larger than a gorilla with an odor like a skunk might seem far-fetched. From the beginning of his time on Earth, man has always been fascinated by monsters, real or imagined. The outside world is very judgmental about these things, uh, with many people not believing in them whatsoever. Cloaked in secrecy, they show up without warning. State their business, then vanish as quickly as they appear. They only land in isolated places. They have taken people, I believe. They do have technology. But the idea is if enough people focus on something, like thousands and thousands of people focus their mind on something and the image, in a very strange way, they can kind of create a real world version of the, the fictional entity. Fact, fantasy, and history have come together to tease the imagination. That the truth will out, and that no one lie can live forever. Welcome to Supernormal. Coming weeks, and this is going to be... Uh, we're really amping up the show, changing it up for everybody. We want to make this show for you, the listener. Uh, but I guess in the corner, and uh, one of all got to- oh, yep, yeah, works. Hey, Bake, uh, who was that? Was that you, that, Vance? No, that no. was me. So sorry. Baker? I needed to mute. Bake, no porn or anything that's going to make noise because the listening <laughs> audience is going to hear it. Okay. What about quiet porn? No, no porn at all. That's super normal <laughs> enough. This is what I work with. Can you wonder why we haven't had a show uh, in months? This is this is the reason why, right here. Hopefully, that we sound means, good. Here. Baker, you should probably lock that cellar door in case they try to get up here. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> I gave your mom the money. She doesn't try to run now. Oh, there we go. The moms here. We have to start. <laughs> right. All right. So, guys, tonight. Uh, I guess just some general topics, some things that have been going on. How about the Goodyear blimp being mistaken for a UFO by many out here uh, on the East Coast? I don't know if you've seen that article or not. Last night driving home, I uh, saw this large cigar-shaped object coming over the uh, mountain. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I actually had to stop and double take. And, (laughs) of course, it was the blimp. But I don't know if... You know, we're familiar with the blimp because it happens to uh, traverse our skies uh, often this time of year. Well, more so last month with the Little League World Series. So the Goodyear blimp's not a stranger to our airspace. Mm-hmm. But it looks like they changed the profile of the blimp this year. It's a little slimmer, more sleek, and it's got like this LED panel on the bottom right? Uh, that displays messaging. That's not new in itself. It has been doing that for some time. But it happened to catch a lot of people off guard. What do you what do you think about that? It's a very interesting story. It is an interesting story. Um, I had a conversation with Valerie yesterday about this because she shared the information with me that you know, of this UFO was seen, and then you know later on come to find out, yeah, it was a Goodyear blimp. And she said, you know, there was a time where they had. And when I say they, this is her story, so I'm not going to share the entire story, but um, her and her mother and her grandmother had a UFO sighting, but not far from there, at a different time, off in the distance, she saw this UFO, which actually turned out to be the Goodyear blimp. And, you know, from a profile, if you can't see the back fins of it, it looks cylindrical and it can throw you for a quick moment if you're not familiar with that particular type of airship. But then I, in turn, shared a story with her that happened to me when I was between the age of five and seven years old. And in the house I was growing up in, uh, I was on the second floor. And at the end of the hallway was a window that overlooked the backyard of the property. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, you know, I was in the hallway. I remember that part and looking out the window and I started screaming an absolute terror because off in the distance at that time, the Goodyear blimp was all silver. It, it's not the color scheme as it is now. And it's yeah. an entirely different dirigible, but it was all silver. And 
I, you know, as a little kid, I would watch the, you know, Rubberzilla movies and, you know, the Saturday afternoon monster movies. Rubberzilla. I'm not familiar well, with that. One. You know, well, the Godzilla and the Rubberzilla. Okay, that but, might be for a different audience. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm so sorry, people. This is a PG rated show. Um, well, anyway, you know, I'd, and I'd watch these shows where they're killing the monster, dropping bombs. So I knew what a bomb looked like. So I was in absolute horror because I didn't know any better. I knew nothing about blimps and dirigibles and zeppelins. And uh, my mother comes running down the hallway because I was in an absolute panic and terror. And she busted out laughing. I, she laughed hysterically, and I felt completely humiliated because my first thought is, what is my mother part of this death plot that they're dropping this giant bomb? I really thought it was a giant bomb that was being dropped, and she laughed and said, no, honey, it's a balloon. Oh, okay. So, yeah, they can be mistaken if you're not familiar with it, if you don't see them. It, it can catch you off guard, and, of course, you know, they do not make a whole lot of noise. They're electric no, they motors. They're know, it is an stealthy. electric motor, right. So the yeah. props, you know, you're not talking a piston or turbine powered engine. So they are relatively quiet and they can sneak up on you if you don't expect the event in which they are yeah, really absolutely. there for. So we we have uh, blimps causing havoc all over the place. Bake, any opinion on that? Anything you want to throw in there about the blimpies? Well, what was it uh, last year, year before? When the, the, that, you got to uh, get closer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> was it last year or the year before when that blimp got loose and it went like four counties before they caught it? Yeah, that was I mean, that was in town. Uh, that those, was locally here in Pennsylvania. Yeah, those, you know, I could see, you know, because when I watched that, I was like, what is that? And, then, uh, you know, and the other thing is, is with a lot of this stuff is <sighs> it's sad, but like people want – like not as much attention but like they want to believe so bad that they make it fit their narrative oh yeah. my god look at the gray thing in the sky it's blah blah blah. well it's got to be no sir that's a frisbee okay um or you know so a lot of times these things happen and it becomes such a big thing because like um you see sasquatch and you see an alien and you see whatever and i see a flying disc in the air and a mangy bear you know, yeah. so I think a lot of times these 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 things get everybody worked up. And then I think it works against the regular community that listens to it on a regular basis, because, like, we always get judged by the stupid things that happen. Of course, that's with any group, but we get judged by it. Like, for instance, like um, when the two guys faked the Bigfoot sighting that they had the body. Oh, yeah, yeah there was there was there was like everybody started to get into Bigfoot, but at the same time was we got laughed at when it all came down, you know, when, um, when uh, people have all these different sightings, the very thing that's going to jump on me now. Okay. So, um, uh, so the thing is, is like, I think that it hurts us in the long run to put cryptids, to try to put cryptids in the situations where they're not actually cryptid, you know, like I love, um, some of the Discovery Network channels, but they're getting so inundated with ghost hunters and finding Bigfoot and whatever yeah. that they're, you're not getting the you're not getting the Meldrum Press and you're not getting the you know Lauren Coleman learned this or you are not getting a lot of these things because you're getting people that are just like I seen a thing in my yard and you know every day it's here to have a tuna sandwich. No, it's not. Just shut up, Bob. You know, like. Let's get a science, you know, let's listen to science less than. No, that's a, fair statement. You know. mm -hmm. I, I do think we've become inundated again with paranormal TV. My email box gets flooded. Not so much people wanting me or us, just wanting our guests and our listeners and our uh, witnesses. They want to put them on the show. And, I, and, you know, good or bad, whatever. I don't want to expose any of our witnesses to that stuff. That's just not. Uh, you know, something I'm comfortable to some of these, especially the serious witnesses aren't wanting to go tell their story everywhere. You know, they want right. to keep that private. They want right. to keep that because uh, it's a very intimate event. Uh, it, it just, you know, paranormal entertainment guys, I think is something we're going to have to deal with. I mean, we're doing it ourselves. You know, let's not be uh, 
you know, too judgmental because we are essentially a paranormal themed talk show and there's an entertainment aspect to it. However, what makes us different? Well, we're not intentionally perpetrating any kind of hoax or misleading information. We're going to go with the information we have. Kind of like the whole topic of tonight's show. It's just a good segue to it. Uh, but folks, if you want to find out more about us uh, and join up with us, go to at the Supernormal Cast on Facebook, and that's how you connect with us. We're really active, or we'll become really active again on Facebook. Uh, we like to communicate, post notes on there, different videos. We got a lot going on in in that uh, in that uh, realm on uh, Facebook at the Supernormal Cast. The genre. Yeah, the genre. That that's where we're going. But you know, it's kind of it's a nice segue into what we were talking about here uh tonight with the phenomenon of the black eyed children because this is something if if you really start to go back and and research the history, it's another one of those phenomena that kind of popped up out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Gordon did some background for us. Gordon, what was the earliest case you found or where the origin of the story was for black eyed kids? There was a story that uh, the first, call it popularized story, uh, Uh was the 80s. However, uh, uh, look at history. There have been sightings without the title Black Eyed Children uh, for hundreds of years. and, and that's that's what I found fascinating because my first instinct was that it was uh, it, uh, the gentleman in the eighties that you're referring to, uh-huh. um, yeah. And quite frankly, something something that new that just pops seems a little odd to me. Uh, so, but and it took a little time, it took a little digging. But I will tell you that there have been uh, reports and sightings. And uh, uh, statues, uh, figurines, those kinds of things of these uh, or very similar, call them creatures. I, I'm not 100% sure what to call them uh, yeah. for, for literally hundreds of years. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I'm seeing this information you passed to us here from the San Lerfa Museum in Turkey, the Urfa Man. You've really done some background on it. But now my question, yeah. I guess, for you would be, is it the same phenomena as, as what we're seeing in black eyed, you know, the black eyed children's story, the black eyed people stories today? Has it evolved? Uh, and I guess maybe we should kind of start with the black eyed kids. Uh, a little background uh, for all intents and purposes, human smaller statured people, children of most, most instances, uh, you know, approach you and uh, try to use their, uh, I don't know, powers of persuasion to get you to allow you into their, into your home or vehicle to do God knows what with you. Uh, Mm -hmm. But the feelings usually always the same one of dread or, or, you know, uncomfortability, Uh, but their eyes are entirely black, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of me, if you catch me in the right light, I squint all my, you know, black completely. <laughs> nah, you're and, uh, sexy with your dark eyes. Right. Oh, They're hey, sultry. Dude. Sultry. The sultriness of the fort shop. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you got to ask yourself, Gordon, is this the same? Because, uh, you know, we go back and look at the statues. You could really infer, you know, where, was that oh, culture talking so many about different things. demonic, you know, demonic beings or or, or, or whatnot. Like it's kind of hard to narrow it down, but sure. I kind of, when I first approached this subject myself, I kind of was on the fence with it. Like slender man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, was sure. this yeah, a phenomenon? It, it, it actually, it, it, it absolutely falls the same kind of, uh, the same kind of slender man. I completely agree with that. And one of the problems with determining whether we're talking about the same kind of creature or, uh, the same sightings uh-huh. uh, when we're talking antiquity is we don't even know what it is today. Yeah. So determining, hey, you know, what are we dealing with versus what are they dealing with? Not, not only do we not know what they meant 
with their statues or their stories even know what's happening today mm-hmm. with our stories. So it is, it is very difficult to nail down uh, whether we're talking about are we are we talking demonic presence? Are we talking simple? It seems that way, though. It, it that that's the way that it 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 bends to me. Right. If the black eyed children phenomena is is actually being described correctly, then I I don't foresee any way of saying that it's alien. It, there are many people who would say alien presence, and mm-hmm. that's brought in by the fact that many of these sightings are followed up by men in black. Um, mm. However, I don't exactly know that the men in black are uh, uh, are alien only. Uh, right. Right. Are do they? You know. Uh, do they not come out if if you've touched something from the other side? Right. Be it alien, be it demonic, you know, uh, angelic. So uh, it, it is a little tricky to say what we're dealing with, actually, because we don't have any stories where anything actually happened. Yeah, the people who let the children in. If we have mm-hmm. a, well, these people let them in, and you know, uh, they dis or they were murdered or or nothing. Um, we well, have there the is ones one. where. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say there is the case which the book was written. Forgive me for not remembering the woman's name. That it, it, it's kind of a cross thing, but it was the illness that ensued afterwards, death, right. deathly illness. Yeah, um, and that you know prolonged yes. for a very yes. long time until it met its final demise. There but were a the, few cases of that, though. Not yes. just to this woman. Right. There's there's a lot of instances of this happening right. after contact. Yeah, it's not a physical conflict. It's a it's a disease. It's an right. illness. It's something that was ingested, whether it's a presence or whatever. the The one thing that stumps me now for our watchers that may not have heard of BEK or Black Eyed Kids or Black Eyed Children or Black Eyed, there is no white to the eyes. The nope. entire oh, eyeball is black, and from witness encounters, yeah, we're not just talking about see, the iris. Right. That's right. It's all the dark. entire eyeball is black. And in a lot of these cases, these and I'm going to say children because they are of smaller stature for most of the reports are shrouded in either a hoodie to kind of hide the face a little bit, present as a children. But they are asking for permission to come inside, which is right back to folklore of the vampire. Yeah, You have to ask permission to come inside. Well, where did that come from? Where did the writing of the stories of the vampire has to have permission to enter your space for him to go ahead and go about his deed? And but now, is there some tie to maybe something that actually did happen with black-eyed kids that kind of crossed over? Again, we all go to all these stories have a little nugget of truth somewhere yeah but, but where found- do we find the truth and where does it start like and so even when you look at the black eyed kids phenomena it's partially there with the vampire you know you can say that you know this feeling of sickness after an encounter could actually not really be a sickness but more be a drain of your physical energy and physical being mm-hmm. right well that's sure. vampirism sure. In another yeah. form, not necessarily the I want to suck your blood, van, you know, vampirism, but, you know, the transference of energy from one being to another. Uh, right. Do the physical descriptions match? You know, pale skin, dark eyes. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you can make that correlation. But then, you know, to sidestep back to what uh, Gordon was saying, now you start throwing in some of the involvement of the men in black right. uh, after these situations. And, of course, you know, these men in black 
Well, they're just sticking their nose in everything. You go to, uh, you know, following up on Bigfoot reports. Uh, you kind of have to ask yourself, are the black eyed kids any form of relative term to the men in black? Are they like a, uh, you know, the, the. Maybe they're the century of yeah. black eyed kids, you know, for all we or, know. Or they're the uh, starting point of to become one of these men in black type beings. Who knows? But there's definitely some sort of correlation between it. And that, to me, starts kind of going back to the, you know, John Keel line of thought with some mm-hmm. of this stuff being very, very connected uh, right. to it. I mean, and there's been many books written on, on the black eyed kids now. Uh, we could sit here and do just an entire show on black eyed kids encounters. And I think the only thing that does is, you know, tell us the experience that folks have had, but none of those cases enlighten us anymore to the nope. being. Nope. We don't come any closer to any kind of conclusion or even narrative that might lead us to a conclusion, which brings back the whole speculation of black eyed kids. Well, kids are smaller. So are the gray, typical almond eyed aliens. So it, maybe this is playing a role in it, that this is a different tactic in which they are taking for abduction purposes. Who knows? Again, it, it, I just find the correlation between the two of small stature, black eyes, and is shrouded. Again, Bake, I, I don't know. Bake, you look like you're ready to chime in there, my friend. Well, it's just with this whole thing is a lot of it, I think that, like, I think what we try to do is figure out, like you say, about the stories encompass the different things. I think the thing is, is that we, we, we try to make sense of what we see, you know, and like, maybe it's a coalition between one or through two things, or maybe it's those kids put off a pheromone or something, or, or maybe the fact is, is that that if you didn't let them in your house or you did let them in your house, that they then, you know, do things to your house mm-hmm. to make it that you have trouble afterwards. Like a gremlin. You know, there's a lot of spirit, you know, like you talk. To a lot of, well, or, or do you talk to a lot of people that, you know, like they always say, you know, don't use a Ouija board because then you invite something else in, but maybe once you invite this thing in and, you know, it comes in and you talk to it for a little or have coffee <laughs> Or whatever, and then what happens is that it it knows it can come in. Yeah, you so then the all the friends show up. For it. You know, you know, and then sure. yeah, you come home and there's like you know the cake is missing from the fridge and and you don't know what went on and you know like it, it just seems when you leave people when you you know when you leave things that you don't quite understand and start messing with them that when something happens afterwards you want to find a reason why. And maybe they were the start, you know, I've always had the discussion of, you know, when you start in this demon stuff and whatever it is, you know, the person you're dealing with directly might be bright and fuzzy because that's their job. You know, um, there was a, there's a show called the vow on uh, HBO, I believe it is. And he goes, nobody joins a cult. They just join a bunch of people they kind of liked. And then they realize what they join, you know, everything has a supervisor. I got a question here from uh, Victoria that says, uh, and we kind of touched on it a little bit, but it says, uh, what are the reports, if any, of people who invite them inside? Well, to some of the, from just memory, I remember, you know, just coming down with a sense of dread and illness afterwards. And, I don't know if these black eyed kids left voluntarily or if they were forced from the home. I don't know. Gordon, you might have a little bit more on that. Yeah, there, there are many reports, a lot of reports, quite frankly, of, uh, of the kids being let in. Uh, it, there is always that sense of fear, uh, always that sense of, impending disaster um, and illness mm-hmm. none of them uh, not, none of the individuals were harmed the children were in the home However, many uh, if not mm-hmm. most uh, come down with 
with some type of illness, be it uh, uh, many of them, quite frankly, came down with mental illnesses uh, from patients, uh, from these children. Now, mm -hmm. the the cause that that amount of fear being generated uh, immediately just upon learning or just upon being in their presence uh, is one of the things that I think is the most interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, <laughs> is uh, uh, there is there is a phenomenon called psychic uh, a psychic vampire. Yeah, who, right. Uh, many uh, there's a very common belief that that feed off here. They can feed off that apprehension. Uh, those are carnal, very base emotions, opposed to, uh, you know, the the, the human emotions. Um, if you can generate fear in somebody, uh, it's palpable even uh, even to you and I. Yeah, it can be uh, let alone Absolutely. somebody who really mm -hmm. it. Uh -huh. So uh, that actually is where I come down on these uh, on these reports is uh, is more on that that psychic uh, vampirism area that uh, actually it has nothing to do with being in the house just gives them longer time be there because it's not right. home there are uh, there are many instances where it's a it's a vehicle uh, they're asking for a ride but they can't get in your car unless mm -hmm. you allow them to um, yeah. you know the I, it, it can I believe be that anywhere. was the initial original story was it not the original it was, that I was introduced that was a to right right that's not uncommon in yeah. some of these stories, yeah. though. Like that's that's absolutely a, a, a trend in behavior. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct, and uh, you know that it, you know there are very few base emotions that that can give you the same uh, same endorphin rush as pure out fear. I think that's what literally the aim is to amp you up to take the to take the life force or the uh, the substance right. from you, mm -hmm. right? The uh, right. our form of adrenochrome, right? right? It, it wants our uh, it wants <laughs> our adrenaline, right? It wants our good stuff. Um, yeah, and but but it's it's not you've not heard any stories, at least I've not heard any stories of anybody being, you know, harmed or physically murdered or anything by one of these no. entities. Of course, no. you know, who the no. hell would report it if that's the case, right? If you're dead, <laughs> uh, you know, good luck telling the story. Uh, it's like yeah. the one thing people ask me, if there have been any reports of Bigfoot killing somebody. How the hell do I know? I know. They're dead. They're, dead. They're not going to go <laughs> tell anybody. Else. We need one of those Ouija boards Baker was talking about earlier. On. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. to discuss that but uh yeah, let's get one i guess the no. story that stands out in my mind with the black eyed kids is the one that uh you know lon strickler over at Vims and monsters posted about the guy that worked at the planet fitness and he was outside smoking a cigarette and this group of teenagers uh approached him and asked him for a cigarette and in unison they're like it's okay we it's quite okay we have permission mm-hmm like just what? the he said he had such a feeling of dread and like fear at the moment. Uh, I mean, I, you'd have that if you were approached by anybody in the middle of the night. One would assume, unless you had titanium testicles, of somebody just approaching you in the middle of the night. You know, you're out there. It's three o'clock in the morning. You want to borrow a cigarette? You're amped up because your next thing they're going to be borrowing is a pint of blood when they stick a, a you know a pen mm -hmm. in your neck or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Like imagine a group of younger I'm not teenage sure where you hang out, Fork Chop. But... <laughs> You've been hey, in the let, city lately. You've let been me here. tell you, uh, Baker, Fork Chop, and myself are in a restaurant all wearing the same Momo t-shirt, and there yeah. were a few looks. 
Yeah, there was were. like they thought kind we were of a, a Momo. <laughs> Yeah, the momosexual gang. Yeah, we, we created the yeah, term momosexual. Yeah. yeah, but then the lady told us that deer explode all the time. <laughs> That's yeah. true. She did. Yeah. Yes. So he he loved it. It's still his thing. <laughs> he, look at that smile he gets when he thinks about that exploding deer. Look at that. <laughs> That's a face only a mother could love right there. But uh, you know, back to the black eyed Yeah, kids. right. Please. Yeah. Uh, you know, the phenomena is quite unsettling, and we're not getting any closer to answering it. Like many of these other paranormal mysteries, they continuously go on and on. But the stories themselves, it, it's one thing to have a paranormal phenomena, that, and it's consistent. But it's one thing where these reports and these stories are, you could almost recite one chapter, line, and verse as they happen. Right. Please, can we come in? Sure. And- you know, like... Go ahead, Gordon. Yeah, it's scary. And one of the things that I find disconcerting is that, quite frankly, you can't this. You can't go somewhere to and try to experience it. No, absolutely. Uh, comes to you. So, mm-hmm. you know, which makes it extremely different. Uh, you know, uh, we've all been on on ghost hunts. We've yeah. uh, we've all been out in the woods waiting to hear those tree knocks. Where do you go? This yeah. this is seemingly and comes to you. Right. Which in yeah. my mind, makes it even more terrifying. You know, I have to give you the uh, screw you moment of the night right there because that's not something I, I thought about until you said no, it. No, I didn't either. Rather, yeah. you know, rather unsettling. You know, because you make a good point. You go to the woods to look for Bigfoot. You go to a lake to look for some sort of lake monster, lake cryptid. You go to a haunted house or some area where there's known activity. But you look where to do the you skies go? for a UFO, right? Yeah, but, but where do you go for? It? You don't. It, it literally comes to you, and that's unsettling. And if, you know, you go into that line of thought, maybe these are some form of vampiric creatures or some sort of entity. Uh, You know, it's fully mobile, not bound to any particular area uh, on the move. And it doesn't just stop at your home. It's your cars, your businesses. Like, that's that's an unsettling thought. That one's going to stick with you for a while. I hope it uh, sticks with you, too, folks, because that one's going to bug me for some time. All right. And, you know, I've never heard a report either that uh, any of these encounters were the BEK, the Black Eyed Kids, in any kind of motorized vehicle. They've always been on foot, walking or approaching those. Um, well, how do you okay, get a license I, as a, you know? Well, it would make for an interesting <laughs> photo BEK on the ID. don't go to the DMVs, I don't know. No, I guess they don't. That was a lame attempt at a joke. That was no, no, funny. actually, I think that's the name of our next album, isn't it? B E Keys don't B E K at the DMV. Yeah. yeah, I think. No. Oh man, I'm so sorry, people. That you yeah, had to hear we that. lost a viewer on that one, Vance. Good job. Yeah, probably. It's probably an internet hiccup. <laughs> I tell you, uh, this is a this is different, guys. We haven't done this in some time, so. Uh, you know, it's just getting our feet wet, getting back into the phenomena. Uh, going back more to what uh, Gordon had done some of that work on us for. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Victoria said she'd let them in as long as they bring wine. As bring wine. Well, that might be the last <laughs> glass of wine she ever has. So. Yeah, well, go go down in a fury of smiles, I guess. Yeah. Just don't leave that question. You know what happens to you, Victoria? Tell us. We don't want it to be a secret. <laughs> yeah, right. Make a journal. We want to nice. know. Now we're going to owe yep, somebody money it. for that one, Baker. Right there. <laughs> that was terrible, Baker. I, I yeah. really hope you're happy with yourself. Don't pun companies that are in bankruptcy. I can't pay them. <laughs> <laughs> then I have the panties. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just wanted to make sure that we hit the uh, hit the points that Gordon provided. With. Gordon did a lot of uh, research into this, and then you know, like I said, several books into the phenomenon. And we'll explore it more as we go through. But you know, just the overview that we did was uh, it's just unsettling. No matter which way you slice it, no matter which angle we try to tackle it from, these are beings that want something. 
uh, what do they want? And it's never clear. They, you know, you invite them in. I'm trying to recall in my, you know, mental uh, fortress up here, uh, any sighting or any report where they've let them in. I want to say there was one from an apartment building. Do you know what I'm talking about? And they were on like, damn it. I hate when that happens. I'm sorry, listeners. They're so unprofessional. Uh, I'm going to find this story. Uh, That's okay. But you keep bringing up the same term and we've all brought up the same term is them because I never recall a single entity BEK encounter. It's usually in a pair. Am I, am I kind of close also to that? Also correct, yeah. From everything that I've seen. No, no, that is, is absolutely uh, uh, usually a pair and usually uh, one is, is uh, appears to be slightly older than the right. other. The older right. one is the one who speaks. Both right. of them will not speak. Uh, just, uh, there, there's almost like a, uh, a speak for the group. And the right. other one's job is just to stand. So right. uh, that is, yeah, that's an excellent point. Is that uh, very? I've never seen a report either of uh, mm-hmm. a black-eyed ch- child. Right, now, as, a, as a single entity. Right. Are any of the reports also like coincide with like abductions in the area or anything like that that might fill in that might actually like like. Like, like, you know, hey, it was a, the, the second child was a kid down the street or, hey, um, it was weird. But the kid I saw was also on a poster three weeks later, you know. Oh, so you, are there any no, no. black well, eyed kids associated with missing kids? Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, either that or maybe the right. first child has been recruited and the second one is somebody he or maybe that um, like I used to watch show Supernatural. And one of the things was, is that they would they would uh, take a form of a child and then they would take a child and then then the children they would look like local children and they were weird local children but mm-hmm. like at the end of the day it was actually just a thing that used that kid's essence and then like like the older one was a newer was or the older one that would speak would be like an older one and the newer one would be just like maybe he was just created in that town you know um so I wondered if there was any like coinciding with abductions, like yeah, hey, I I saw this kid on my porch, and then weird that there was a there was a child alert for the same child, same type of child, or, you know, a week later or a couple hours later that I didn't you know didn't put together until maybe a month afterwards. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a hell of a thought, though, and not I, one again, I, Gordon. I believe, believe it, Baker, but that that is totally amazing uh, uh, idea. I I hadn't. Yeah. I haven't considered that. I will tell you that I have seen that. However, I don't know that it's been cross referenced either. So, yeah, uh, that's an extremely interesting idea. Yeah, that's a good thought. Are the missing children? That, I'm, you know what? That's a question for, uh, I want to say David Weatherly. Yes. That's a he question. Would, that yeah. Might yes, be able is. to send out to him. Uh, yeah, I really I appreciate the question. Now now you got my gear spinning and now I can't focus on hosting the show. Thank you, both of you, Gordon, for one, planting the thought that these things find you, and Baker for now making me want to, you know, check the registry for national, you know, missing and exploited children to uh see if there's any black eyed kids that are coming mm-hmm. from this, this shit. Now I'm really it's disturbing. But you know, you think about that though, it makes we a lot of pre- sense. We now. can pretend like don't already have that up on your screen. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's uh, Vance's new mission out there right now to go out and <laughs> rid the world of traffickers. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. right there, that says that's mm-hmm. actually not a slinky. It's a good mission. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. spun razor wire that he yes, uses it is. to take yes. down his clothes. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Baker, Whole what other subject matter? Got? What other wisdom do you have on that one? Because you really threw me for a doozy with that uh, with that thought process. Well, the other question I might have is um, of some of these encounters, 
you know, you might want to look at the people that were in the house and then if you could collate the other encounters, maybe it comes to their house to duplicate them or it comes to their house to do something to them and then they become the next whatever. Because like in most of these stories, most, of, yeah, but in most of these things, like you look at, you look at all these stories, the, the creature or whatever it is doesn't always just consume something. Maybe there's something it needs that that family has. And they're like, okay, I can get in the door. And now, you know, now I can, you know, figure out, you know, from there I can go off to the next town and I look like that person. And then, you know, or, you know, um, there's a Stephen King wrote a really good book, the outsider. And that's exactly what happened was it was a creature that basically took over someone else's life and then lived off the mur the the after after it did a horrible thing with that guy's face, mm -hmm. it lived off the misery of not only the person that it basically you know put in jeopardy, but also the family. Like it it actually stayed in the town for like another like three months till it picked another victim to just watch the the how like the whole family implode and all the friends and everything. So That's maybe it's powerful. maybe. Maybe it's let you let it in the house and then it like does something to you that maybe you don't even notice. And then it watches you, you know, right. you, don't, right. you, you don't know. Cause you know, none of us know. Cause I'm you not know, an no expert. Cause no one's trapped a little black eyed kid and say, yeah. Hey, what's your goal? You know because what? Probably, here's, here's a thought. And wow. Talk about a perfect plan. So if a black eyed children <laughs> visit, God to whomever and okay. and part of the result or the the energy vampire part of it whatever and people have mental problems after that how would your story be conveyed that it was not a mental problem that you saw this event happen yeah hmm. that's a what a great cover sure i mean now you're immediately discredited because of the fact that you're having a mental breakdown or mental issues. Therefore, who's going to buy your story? Yeah. Huh. Well, I mean, a lot these of people, people these are anyway. these little bastard kids. I tell you, wow. Well, they say the same thing with alien abductions and some of the other stuff. You know, they wonder if after the alien abducted you, that it didn't affect you in a way so that people wouldn't listen to you. Yeah, right, it right, crazy. right. You know, it either made you crazy or made it that whenever you think of the situation, you're slightly off. So therefore, you know, you're not just off because you got abducted and possibly probed or God knows mm -hmm. whatever. It, mm -hmm. it may be the fact that it did something to your brain to shorts, you know, like now you have not, you know, like anger issues or now you have um, now some form, you mm -hmm. have some form of a disability that makes it that's what happened to that. me. Oh, see, it's all coming back now. Now I know why I like the Maker's Mark whiskey. That explains it. I took a probe. I think at it's some because point. Baker used the word probe. <laughs> probe. It is. There we uh, go. Probe. We ask the probing questions here. Crops. We do. We do. I'm more of a crop duster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> he's a crop duster. <laughs> but no, you guys all posed some really good points here tonight, and uh, you know, just to recap it, you know, talking about the black eyed children phenomena, and I told you that story about the apartment complex that really bothered me, and I want to say I heard it from Lon Strickler again, mm -hmm. and that was knock at the door in the apartment, guy doesn't let him in. Here's a wrapping on the outside window, bal balcony window, and sees one of these beings on his outside balcony. Like, how the hell did it get up there? Yeah. No, that's when you're packing your suitcase and staying at the uh, Holiday Inn. That's like Lost oh. Boy shit right there. You know? Right. And that's the thing. This thing asks for permission to come in. Like, you have to invite it. and, and Well, you don't have to invite it. It invites itself. But you have to allow it to come right. into your home, you have to give it permission. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's the tell. And I just, I wouldn't be comfortable, especially in this day and age, letting strange children with odd features into my home. Right. Uh, without somebody else being there or a, a shotgun nearby. And that's going to create a whole nother situation later on down the road. You're going to have right. a, uh, 
a uh, whole other uh, focus group out there after us for that one. And right. like, we have to be very cautious on these entities. Cause we don't know what they are. If they're vampires, they want something. If they're extraterrestrial, they want, so let's just say this unknown phenomena, this unknown entity for what it is, human, mm-hmm. non-human, extraterrestrial, ultra terrestrial, whatever. It's not normal. And you just shouldn't let them in your house. Don't don't do it. No, 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 no. Don't become a statistic. No. no I mean, I'm no all for proving this phenomenon you can't exists. Go on the porch with them. You can go on the porch. They, they That's right. Porch is safe. No, they don't. And I and I think this is one of those phenomena, guys, that I don't want to go out and try to prove myself. No. I I don't want to go anywhere near these things. No. But see, again, I, I keep drawing back to the correlation between the classic vampire stories from yeah. Dracula having to ask for permission to come inside. Now, is that based from uh, something in Catholicism where, you know, Satan has to ask for permission to do whatever it is that he's going to do? And I'm sorry I'm using it as a he, but... I, I'm trying to draw the correlation between why, I, because that's a really strange thing. Listen, I you don't know, care. Somebody I that has ill intent, a human that has ill intent to steal from somebody else is not going to ask that owner, hey, can I come in? No, you break yourself in and you, you, you wreak your havoc, whatever it is. This has to ask for permission and you have to be willing. I just don't, how the correlation between the two is kind of surprising to me uh, unless one has something to do with the other maybe it comes from you know the same realm the same place the same dimension the same maybe here who knows Uh, and there's a little nugget of truth to that as to why the stories got written that way was maybe because black-eyed kids existed and and those stories just kind of morphed into being a vampire go ahead bake you're on mute, buddy. Nice going. Uh, there, you, there go. you go. I think the thing you hit on the on the head was is that a lot of the stories in back in the day and and through the pilgrims and things they got is is like Pilgrim. the biggest thing was is to do evil was a choice. Yeah. So you had to let the evil in. You had to let the you had, you had to make the choice of doing one thing or another. It wasn't as much that things happened to you. Um, your land got spoiled because you were wit because you chose to do something. You know, mm-hmm. nothing ever happened to the righteous person. You know, so like, I think that's where a lot of that stories come from, and that's why I've always hated welcome mats. You know, because you know you put a bunch of welcome mats around your house, and basically you're just you know everybody's allowed to come in. No, oh, well, that explains you know, a lot. Get okay. off my porch, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, there you. Well, and again, God. I hate when he makes sense and I hate when he does this shit because it, you know, all week we talk about things. We have a show and he doesn't talk about any of this stuff. He doesn't prepare me for any of these mind gems that he has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should go on a road trip with us. Matter of fact, just so you guys know, we are road tripping this weekend. We are yes, going we are. to beautiful Erie and then we're going to a Carver's convention. We are also nice. going to walk for cystic fibrosis. So we're going to yeah, do nice. some good. And then do some horrible things, probably with drinking. Yeah, so so that, we figure that's, that's a nice sandwich. Probably good. Yeah, in you there. definitely will. It's all in the name of science and fun and uh, camaraderie, mm. guys. It's our first show back. Cut us a little slack. I don't ask that very often. We're just trying to put this all together and figure out what works. But we've enjoyed being here with you tonight again. Our social media at Super Normal, the Super Normal Cast on Facebook at Super N R M L on Twitter. And Supernormalcast on Instagram. We're on there. We're socially active people. Guys, we'll go around the bend here and tell them where folks can find you. Baker, where can folks find you at, baby? Um, post office. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, usually, if you find Sean, I'm usually there. <laughs> they all go. Because when I go um, somewhere, they're like, well, where's Sean? And when he goes somewhere, they're like, where's Baker? Um, I have a Facebook page. Um, I'm usually very active i just ask the one thing is if you don't like what i have to say i don't need your prayers just stop talking. okay uh yeah i know 
Uh, Vance, where can folks find you? Uh, right in this area here, or in the yeah. bathroom, or yeah. sleeping. Uh, no, find me at Facebook, Vance A. Nesbitt on Facebook, because actually there is another Vance Nesbitt in California, and we don't see eye to eye, so we've never He's talked to each other after that. He is a tool. And uh, you can find me on Instagram, Vance underscore Nesbitt underscore NRML. I love that. Nice. Super normal. I swear to God, he makes these handles longer just so he gets more airtime. I do. He likes oh, the God. underscore and he likes the handle. Anywhere hog. you want folks to find you, or do you want to be anonymous? Because we're okay with that too. No, that's fine. Uh, Gordon Phillips on Facebook. He's uh, our buddy. I stay Instagram, Snapchat, all that business. I don't. I don't need anything that disappears that quick. Uh, Unlike Baker, uh, my favorite thing in the world is to argue. So if you don't like something I have to say, uh, let's argue about it. Well, there you go. Look at that. Come on, Gordon. Come over here, Gordon, and tell that to my face. Come on. Come on, Gordon. (laughs) Come on. Right now. You and me. Right now. He wants to write in the face. A nice nice keyboard warrior is what I live for. (laughs) Uh, And, of course, you all know me. You know how I earn a living right here? Yeah. I don't. I wish I did. I don't. I have to have a real job because this one doesn't pay shit. But I'm Sean Forker. I'm my name. You can find me everywhere. <laughs> social, everywhere on social media, I go by my name. I don't hide behind a handle. I am me. Find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Wemu, Bobo, whatever new social media outlets out there. I'm on it because I like to talk to people. I just like people. This is a crazy world we live in. We share it with some phenomenal things. We have some phenomenal mysteries, and together, either by conversation and I don't know what the hell he's doing. Uh, the bat signal's up. I'm I, scared I don't to know. death right now. Uh, it's I it's kind of where we were going, but it was a good time. We'll see you next time, folks. Have a good one on behalf of Monica, Maz, and the whole super normal team. Peace. Thank you for coming along to this week's event. Remember, If by chance you get an odd feeling and something doesn't seem right, don't be alarmed by it. It's just the super normal.